back to another episode of Tubing with Tyler. It's week two of the NFL, and one thing last week showed us is that there are no sure bets on who will win. Now, as a reminder, I'd like to point out that I will be giving my news and views on the Pittsburgh Steelers a Monday night matchup in a marquee matchup game of the week. With that said, let's get to it. The New Orleans Saints are heading to Vegas to square off against the Raiders on Monday night. For the Raiders, it's unfortunate to have to open up the brand new stadium with no fans in the stands. For the Saints, they are fresh off a week one victory over Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Bucks as a result of some big plays from the defense, including a pick six gift from old man Brady. So can they count on the defense to help them grab a win again this week in Vegas? The offense should start to find its rhythm in this one, even without Michael Thomas, who may be out several more weeks with an ankle sprain. Look for the Saints to get it going on the ground early in this one. Last Sunday, the Raiders trailed after the first quarter, but took it up a notch by the middle of the game. They held a 27 to 15 lead, but allowed 1,500 answered points to the Panthers. Las Vegas was able to score in the fourth quarter to eventually seal the deal. I would like to point out that they did let up 30 points and almost 400 total yards against the Panthers. They'll need a much better defensive performance if they plan to stop Drew Brees and company. The Raiders defense ranked 19th overall in 2019, but was 24th in points allowed. This is a tough matchup for the Raiders defense. After knocking off the rust last week, the Saints should have no problem containing Josh Jacobs while improving to a 2-0 this season. Raiders 20, Saints 33. And now, let's move on to your Pittsburgh Steelers! Denver felt short in week one while Pittsburgh got it done, mainly due to their great defensive play holding Giants running back Saquon Barkley to only six rushing yards. Wow, now that's impressive. Even if the Broncos put together a good season this year, I just can't imagine Drew Locke winning this one for Denver. The Steelers will again keep their opponents one-dimensional, forcing Locke to beat them with his arm, and without Cortland Sutton on the lineup, that's just never gonna happen. The Steelers' offense looked rough early as Big Ben played through some jitters, but was able to spread the ball around to a great receiving corp led by Juju and rookie receiver Chase Claypool. Check out this rookie's first career reception. It's really confused offensive line. Roethlisberger taking a downfield shot, looking for Claypool, and the rookie from Notre Dame hauls it in. Yeah, that's right. The AFC North has a Pittsburgh problem. I know the Ravens are going to be contenders, but I'm sure the Steelers' defense will give Baltimore a run for their money. Even without James Conner, RB2 Benny Snow football had no problem hitting the century mark in week one. Hopefully, they feed the north-south runner the ball early and often in week two. The Steelers' pass defense did allow a few plays in week one and gave up a touchdown after a questionable pass interference called on third and long. The pass rush was on point and the defense will continue to make plays and create turnovers. And I'm not saying this game is going to be a blowout, but Pittsburgh will cruise to a 2-0 start. Pittsburgh 27, Denver 13. Speaking of Baltimore, that takes us to this week's marquee matchup game of the week. The Ravens roll into Houston to battle the Texans. Last week, the Ravens had their way with the Cleveland Browns, but come on. After all, it's the Cleveland Browns. It's not like we didn't see that coming. 
The Texans are coming off a disappointing loss to Kansas City. Houston didn't play that bad, it's just that KC is that good. The Texans offensive line did struggle and this game would have been a lot worse if not for Deshaun Watson's athleticism. Wolf Fuller had himself an okay day, but there were also a few dropped passes and missed cues from the receiving core. It's obvious they miss having my man DeAndre Hopkins out there. David Johnson had himself a solid outing while Duke Johnson left early with an ankle injury. Duke will be a long shot to play this week. Officially listed as week to week. What can we say about the Ravens after week one? Well, it's clear they landed a stud with J.K. Dobbins. Will we see more workload from him this week? If I'm calling the plays, I wouldn't hesitate to call on the first year player. Lamar Jackson looked good throwing the ball downfield. Jackson seemed comfortable in the pocket, but let's face it, this was just a preseason game for the Ravens. The Browns gifted them an easy week one victory filled with multiple turnovers, bad play calling, including a hideous first quarter fake punt, a missed field goal, and extra point. I don't mean to discredit the Ravens. Jackson did hit nine different receivers as they were able to successfully spread the ball around. And the ground game seems to be doing just fine as well. To beat Baltimore, Watson and Houston's offense need to sustain drives. They need to move the chains. I predict a heavy dose of David Johnson in the first half, but I'm not sure that will be enough to overcome the Baltimore Ravens in week two. Baltimore also improves to 2-0 by a score of 28 to 24. Well, there you have it folks, you've heard it here. Reporting live from my dad's garage. This has been another one of Tyler's Ticks. Be sure to like and subscribe for more views and news on sports. Head over to our Facebook page where you can leave comments and suggestions for other YouTube ideas. See you next time. Bye.